how did you react when you read the news about the four Israeli hostages being uh, rescued? Yeah. So I was in Paris with three of my older children and um, I had my phone on me for emergencies and I got a call. My phone was in my backpack and I wasn't able to get it in time. And I, I opened it up to see who it was because not many people call me on a Saturday. And then I saw the news popping across my newsfeed and that was why that person had called me. And I just collapsed sobbing on the sidewalk. And my kids were like, what's going on? Oh my God, is everything okay? And people rushed over to me because there's just this random woman suddenly sobbing in the middle of the sidewalk. It was such an incredible burst of good news that I, I think everyone desperately needed. Now, our friend John Podhoritz tweeted out over the weekend that this was a very critically necessary emotional lift for the entire Jewish state. Do you agree with that assessment? 100%, 100%. It was starting to feel like we were mired. We were in a stalemate in Gaza and there was no end in sight. And and that is in large part true. I mean, Jonathan Shanzer had a great appearance on the commentary podcast last week talking about that, that it feels like what what is the next steps? It doesn't feel like there's necessarily a, a path forward. Um, but this was really like a, a punch in the a punch of adrenaline. Like this is this is what Israel is doing. This is this is why um, this is why we're there. And I say we as in the United States, because the United States helped a lot with the intelligence that led to what happened on Saturday. So today, Secretary Blinken is back in Israel. I really don't know what he's talking to the Israelis about, because everything they've asked the Israelis have done. Hamas has said no for the 10,000th time. Why do you think Secretary Blinken is there? I think he's trying to look like he's doing something. There was an interesting report in NBC this morning that Israel, uh, I'm sorry, that the United States might have a unilateral conversation without Israel with Qatar to try to free the American citizen hostages. There's five. And so he might be talking about that with the Israelis. Like, we've decided to go it alone to get at least the Americans out um, and, and what those terms might look like. If I were to make a guess, I think that's what he's probably talking about. If that did not in any way compromise Israel's security, we would have no objection. I, I would applaud that. In fact, if Qatar yeah. has some way to get the Americans out, but I doubt they do. I do want to recognize Arnon Zamora. He is the incredible hero, now declared officially a hero of Israel, whose life was given in the rescue of the four Israelis who were held hostage. And the turnout yesterday, I think, evidenced the way Israel feels about people who give their all. Yeah, it was really incredible. I, I remarked on Twitter this morning that there's going to be a lot of babies named Arnon, both in the United States and in Israel, um, because he gave his life in service of of freeing these hostages. And a lot of hostage families went to his funeral to say thank you. And a lot of the hostage families, when they've spoken to media, the first thing they say is, before I talk about the rescue, I want to say thank you to Arnon for his sacrifice. That I did not know that. Thank you for telling me that. So, Bethany, Benny Gantz quit last night. And I'm, I'm shocked, actually, that anyone would leave a war cabinet in a month, in an eight-month-old war. And it seems to me the Israelis cannot not do politics. Are you surprised by how quickly politics has returned to the Israeli front and center? I, the only thing that I'm surprised about was that it took this long. I, there has been an infusion of politics in the, in the Bring Them Home hostage, um, I guess, movement, you would call it. Um, it, it. It stemmed from... The protests that were pre-existing, all of that infrastructure was um, used in order to create the bring him, bring them home movement. And there's been protests against Netanyahu in the streets of Tel Aviv for months now. Um, Lahav Harkov at the Jewish Insider has had great reporting on this, um, but a lot of the a lot of the um, the protests that you're seeing in Tel Aviv are uh, the stepchildren of the anti-Netanyahu. Uh, judicial reform protests that you were seeing in September. Doesn't that outrage the families of the hostages yeah. that, that their family have been, in effect, co-opted into the anti-Netanyahu, anti-Yavir, anti-Smotrich movement? So there's a there's a secondary group of uh, hostage families. They've formed something called the Tikva, Tikva Forum. Um, and so there there is some outrage. There's been hostage families who have asked for their family members' pro posters to not be displayed at those anti-Netanyahu protests. But there's a lot of the hostage families who are justifiably very angry at Netanyahu. He has 
not met with them frequently enough. He has not discussed their their family's plight frequently enough, in their opinion, and in mine as well. Um, and they feel like, you know, we're eight months into this and he has not done his job and he was asleep at the wheel on October 7th. So their anger at Netanyahu is not is not misplaced. But I do think that they their uh, sort of cause has been co-opted by anti Netanyahu folks. Yeah, everything is not political and a war is very rarely political, although Netanyahu might be thoroughly political. Let me close this way, Bethany. Do you expect the government to remain stable and in place for the duration of its term? I do for now. I don't think that his pullout for now will, will sacrifice it, but it could. We'll